Now, you might have heard of the age pill in black pill circles. The age pill is simply the reality that we cannot stop aging and eventually we die. More specifically, in the context of the so-called black pill, in the context of lookism, the age pill refers to the fact that even if you look really good at age 45, 50, 55, you would not look as good at that age as you would if you were in the equivalent shape at age 20 or 25 or even 30. Basically, age catches up to us all and makes ruin of us all, and eventually we all drop dead. This is nothing new. I'm not claiming it's anything new, but you get my point. And, of course, from a hyper-looks-focused perspective in the modern context of the black pill, that all makes sense that you would focus on the looks aspect, which is to say the older you get, the fewer options you have, typically setting aside money and beta bucks, whatever. But there's another element to this, another aspect that I think a lot of people neglect to mention, mostly because the people who talk about the age pill are typically very young, and so they're hyper-focused on things like youth, virility, looking good, and they're neglecting some of the other aspects that come into play when you get older, and it's for this reason that I want to talk about some of this. The other age pill, as it were, is the age pill with respect to social connections and how these develop distinctly and differently over time. And shout out to Alex Datesyke for talking about this in a brief video. But you can look at the graphic here, and you can see that really the older you get, on average at least, the more difficult it is to make friends, the more difficult it is to maintain friends. And in general, your social relationships, barring your quote-unquote romantic relationship, we'll talk about that later, they generally plummet. And you end up spending most of your time by yourself. And when you're not spending most of your time by yourself, you're spending most of your time with your quote-unquote partner. And this is an aspect of the black pill, if you will, or just coming in terms of reality. A lot of people simply don't talk about for obvious reasons. Again, a lot of people are hyper-focused on being young, looking good, looks maxing, getting a girlfriend, a GF, building a foundation for whatever, I don't know, getting a girlfriend and then maybe getting married and having kids, I'm not sure. It's not exactly clear what the lookism community or the black pillars really want ultimately because they're so hyper-focused on the moment, understandably to some degree, and to some other degree, not so understandably. But I want to talk about just how much harder it is when you're older to A, make friends, B, maintain friends, and C, the fact that you're going to be spending most of the time alone, whether you like it or not. Now, there's a certain logic to this if you think about how this comes to pass. It's very obvious if you look at the graph again that for the most part, the friendships you forge are somewhere between the ages of 0 and 20. And you might want to push it to 25. Basically, in scholastic environment, and or a university environment, you're just much more likely to meet people and you're much more likely to connect to people and you're much more likely to strike up conversations and you're going to be in the same class and you're basically put forcibly, as it were, into social situations, whether you liked it or not. So maybe you met your closest friend from university sitting in on a history lecture years ago. I don't talk to him anymore and we can talk about it in a bit. Years ago, I had a very close friend at university went on for quite some time after university. I met him in a History 101 class about Western civilization eons ago, way back in the 90s. Would I have met him otherwise? No, he was an econ major. I was studying something completely different. However, we needed to fulfill our general education requirements, and that was a result. And these sorts of things happen all the time. When you're put forcibly into a social environment, then you will end up talking to people, meeting people, usually, right? What happens after university? Well, assuming after you graduate, assuming even after a master's degree, because then you still have some opportunities, assuming after all this stuff, right, what happens is, generally speaking, you start working regularly. You hold down a normal job, and so the people that you do talk to are your colleagues or your coworkers, and other than that, you just go home, and maybe if you're lucky, you retain some of these friendships from the days of yore, but maybe not. And so you have a limited amount of time, much less time, because university can be time-consuming, but you're spending a lot of time socializing, unless you're a total hermit, nerd, whatever. You just spend all day studying. That exists too. But on average, that's not the case. And so, yeah, you go to work, you come back, you try to relax. You don't have a lot of opportunities for socializing or interacting with people. And this is a pattern you can just observe as you get older. This is what happens. Now, for most people, most normies, in the traditional sense of the word normie, most normies decide to settle down, right? They find a partner, they get married, many of them have kids, 
And if they don't have kids, they still have a partner. And what happens is all the friendships of old start to wither away and disappear. And anecdotally, I could tell you a thousand stories about this, but it's very, very common. I've seen it happen in my own life, I've seen it happen in other people's lives, and that's just what happens. And the older you get, the greater this problem becomes if you're looking to socialize, if you're looking to make friends, if you're looking to do all these things. Another aspect I can talk about, and I can say this in particular as someone who's traveled and lived all over the world, but this applies almost universally everywhere. If you're a newcomer pretty much anywhere, that many of the people there, if they're 25 plus, and even before that, will have well-established lives and they don't need you. They don't need your contact. They don't need your socialization. They don't need any of the things you might have to offer because either they don't perceive you as being valuable enough, and that could be a mistake on their part, but regardless, their perception stands or they have what they need already. And they're not going to bother with extra stuff on the side, including you. Let's say you get a work transfer and you're age 37. You end up in a completely new city, even if it's in the dysfunctional states of America. Well, you'll meet people at work, but that's about it. What's going to happen? The people in that area have been there for years, if not decades. They have everything they need. Now, you might talk about family. Family is hit or miss. But typically, you can see time spent with family drops off as well. Unless, of course, you live with your family in some kind of traditional setting where you have grandparents and parents and cousins and everything all in the same building. That happens, but that's not very common. So social relationships, I would argue, are very important. Yes, there are a lot of people that talk about living hermetically or going monk, as they call it. But most people need some kind of social contact. And in time, as these social contacts wither away, you're typically not left with a whole lot, especially as all the normies out there decide to get married, have kids, partner up, whatever, especially if you're going your own way, this sort of thing. People aren't going to really be around much. And look, at the end of the day, you have to come to terms with it. Indeed, we all stand on our own, we all die on our own, and we have to live with that. But the journey there, I'd argue, is made worse if you don't have good, healthy social relationships with people. I'm not talking about relationships in the sense of romantic relationships, obviously, but ideally family members, but certainly friends. And I can tell you that generally speaking, the tethers that bind people can be pretty weak and thin indeed, especially if you decide to leave your local environment. As someone who's left my local environment many times, I can tell you many things are dependent upon the social ecosystem as it stands in that area where you are at the time. Remember I brought up that friend of mine back in the day from the 90s, I'm at a university in History 101 class. Well, I maintained contact with him for quite some time, even living abroad or being an expat, and he put in less and less effort over time. Eventually I just gave up because nothing would come from him and that was it. Had I remained in the United States in close proximity, I'm sure we would have still hung out, et cetera, et cetera. Indeed, when I was in the United States, that's what seemed to be the case. So the proof is in the pudding. The same is true of other people I've met throughout my life. People tend to be, quote unquote, friends in a fixed location. Now, you might make the argument that online you can transcend that. Indeed, I've made some good friendships online, and I definitely value them a great deal, but they lack the communal effect. For example, what if you want to move? Do you have a friend to help you move? What if you're going on a holiday? What if you need to leave on an emergency? Who's going to pick up your mail? What if you have a cat or a dog? Who's going to take care of the cat or dog? I mean, there are other options, obviously, but not having a community, not having a social environment that supports you makes things really, really difficult. And I think it's something that everyone, especially every man, needs to consider, in particular if he decides to go his own way, because there are drawbacks to that potentially. And I can tell you, I don't regret never getting married and forsaking relationships and the whole shebang. But I'm not going to lie about the drawbacks from that as many of the people in my life have disappeared. I even used to have this friend who totally rejected the path of going his own way and ended up getting married to someone and basically became obsessed with marriage and having children purely out of the fear factor of being alone. I've observed this. So what I'm trying to say is basically, if you can, forge strong relationships with people and try not to move around too much. I know people talk about travel and this and that. It's really overrated. And I think a great example of why travel and exploration is overrated is actually Pete. That guy, Pete, you refused to invite to gatherings. He's never really left New York City. Nonetheless, he's not missing out on anything. Why? Because he literally lives with his family, and they're there, and he has all the social connections he had when he was growing up. Everything is there for him. 
Now, let's say he decided to, I don't know, move to Argentina on a whim. What would he get out of that? He'd be a stranger in a strange land. He would face all the issues I just mentioned of trying to get to know people who already have established lives, et cetera, et cetera. So you should really, really think about things like geomaxing and leaving the country in the terms of cost benefit, because there are always costs. And these costs are often not mentioned. But leaving where you come from, you pay a price for it. And you really need to think about whether or not you want to pay that price. At the end of the day, ultimately, we're all on our own. We're all by ourselves. But that life in extremis is not for everybody. So it's something really to consider. Anyway, as always, thank you for tuning in. Please hit the like button, share, comment, all that YouTube jazz. And if I'm still alive, I'll check you out later. Take care. May the gods watch over you. Bye-bye. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.